Welcome back to Ohio Valley Conference Football Media Day here on ESPN Plus, presented by Delta Dental. Bob Delvin, just a school south of Nashville in the Franklin area. And these guys have made their way from Cape Girardeau, Missouri this morning. Simo represented by Coach Tom Matukowicz, Nate Cordy, the big old lineman, and the DB Lawrence Johnson. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You guys were here bright and early. Is the coach get you up and had y'all work out and then leave Cape or spend the night? What's going on here, Nate? Uh, he, uh, we left right after we worked out yesterday All about right. noon, All so it right. wasn't too bad. So you got to go home and work out what yeah. we're doing here, right? Yeah. right. It's just yeah. about three and a half to Cape from here. You, you'll be good. Once you get through that terrible traffic along I-24 in yep. Kentucky, you'll be fine. Coach, welcome. This is becoming old hat. You're trying to chase Jason Simpson as the longest tenured guy in the conference. It is, man. It's crazy that I'm going on my ninth season and um, hit some milestones. I actually uh, have a full-time O-line coach that actually played for me, then GA for me, and then now is able to hire him. And there are some things like that that I'm super proud of. And you start getting older and you start thinking about legacy and, and things like that. Uh, you know, the last five years, no one's won more OBC games than SEMO football. Right. And why I'm so proud of that is because SEMO's had its years, but, but we haven't been able to be a consistent football program. And uh, that's, that's probably what I'm uh, most proud of so far. So let's talk about last season, a, a struggle of non-conference, inside the conference. It just seemed like you never could put together that kind of streak that you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we finished second, and everybody says we struggled. Yeah. They'd have gave a left arm to be second 10 years ago, and um, that's what you appreciate. There's just new expectations and new standards. and uh, There was a lot of things that the team had to go through, and it's just how, how it happens. But the one benefit is when you go through that, you get the reward of the next year. You know, we had to play a lot of young players and, and things like that that are now old enough. And, and, had injuries, but now we're better and stronger and all those things. And, um, just really looking forward to seeing what the 2022 team uh, ends up being. You know, everybody's got COVID stories, and I've talked to the two student athletes about that as well. And, and you know, the crazy spring fall thing, and, and, and hopefully we're behind that for the most part. But tell us how SEMO handled all of that and, and kind of what the protocols were in the state of Missouri, kind of the restrictions that were placed on you, and kind of how we play football through this. And the reason I mention it is because it's the first time we've been in person in three years. Yeah, it is, and human connection is so important, and uh, everything just felt like it got put on pause. And Missouri is just like any other state. We had NCAA rules that we had to abide by, and um, we just treated it just like any other adversity that a team faces, whether it's an injury or something else. It's just something we got to not complain about that we just got to do better than our opponents at and um, it was certainly stressful I could tell you one of the byproducts is we had a lot of surgeries you know we missed so much time in the weight room and, and uh, the, the weight room makes you a better player but also makes you uh, able to stay healthy through a tough season and so uh, you know now that we've been able to have a true off season and be in the weight room and develop our bodies I'm looking forward to, to maybe a healthier year. And a guy to your left is going to be a big part of it, uh, blocking for that running game. Nate Cordy is Absolutely. joining us now here on set. Uh, Nate, we talked to Coach about COVID and, and all the endurances that had to take place there, but you've been a starter for a while. You've been through this COVID thing, yeah. uh, and now you're uh, going to reap the benefits of it this season. Talk a little bit about your responsibility, your roles in the O-line. Well, we've got all the our uh, O linemen coming back, so just just being able to lead them and make sure they know what the mission is, and being able to block for Gino, and you know he makes us right most of the time, and you know that's yeah, that's mine. Yeah, Gino Hess being a big part of that run game, it's been a big part of your kind of culture, and I'm going to ask Coach a little bit more specifically about that in a little bit. But being able to run the football and being able to be physical has been a hallmark of Coach Tuke's career teams. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I know you've been a big part of that, a big part of that as well. Kind of talk about that mentality that goes in with the O-line. You know, he, he Coach Tuke likes the guy who puts on his hard hat and brings his, his lunch to work. And, you know, that's that's really what he's looking for when he recruits. And that's what he tries to coach us through. And, you know, it's 
it's a physical game, and he, we understand that. Lawrence, tell us about your trip to SEMO and, and, and your journey through high school and, and, and some of those decisions to go play football in Cape. Um, well, first off, I do want to thank Coach Tooth for you know giving me this opportunity. He was like, he was the only coach to offer me out of high school. Um, my journey in Cape has been, it's been great. It's been good to me. You know, like I got a chance to play behind some amazing people, play with some amazing people like Zach Hall, who was a Buck Buchanan Award winner, and like Bidarius Knighton, who was like yep. in the NFL, and Shabari Davis, a whole bunch of players that are like good people, not only good players on the field, but good people, good men off the field. And I just, I'm just really appreciative of those people and Coach Tuke and all the, the bonds that I've made at, in Cape Girardeau. And you mentioned those, those players, and I, I want to ask a real specific question. Are you paying, when you watch them, are you paying more attention to technique, uh, kind of intangible qualities? What are you watching when you want to mirror your game uh, after some of those that you mentioned? I'm really looking at, I'm looking at everything, you know, like you said, I'm looking at technique, I'm looking at like the things that can be taught, like instinct, the instinctive part of football, I'm, I'm looking at like pre-snap alignment, and I'm asking coaches questions like, so what, what should I be thinking pre-snap right here, you know, just stuff like that. Let's talk a little bit about this schedule for this season. Uh, obviously, I have a new member, Lindenwood, going to pl play there. But uh, kind of talk about the schedule, particularly the non-conference, and kind of what your philosophy is around that. Yeah, we're really excited. Um, seven of our 11 opponents were nationally ranked a year ago. Yeah. I mean, it's a really, really good schedule filled with some, you know, known names. Uh, some teams that we're not that familiar with. So it's kind of exciting as a coach in, you know, in the OBC or in FCS, you know, ultimately you got to play some good teams because that's going to give you a better resume at the end of the year. And, you know, uh, we obviously don't have a full schedule within our conference, but that's not going to hurt us because we have some really good non-conference opponents. And uh, the negatives of, of playing in, you know, a, a barn burner every every week is just that depth and injuries and stuff. Other than that, and, and as long as you don't have a big ego, like there's nothing wrong with finding out what it is you got to get better at. Nate, offensive line, uh, you grow up all your life wanted to be an O line at SEMO? Yes, sir. I got to hear this story. Go ahead and pick that mic up and tell us about it. Um, the, um, Coach Tuke was the only one who offered me, and I uh, I played at Morris High School in Illinois, and you know we we ran a wing tee, and we always 99% of it we ran the ball, and you know I just take pride in it. I take pride in the running back su success, and um, you know I'm just I'm happy to be able to block for Gino and our other running backs. Are you the kind of guy? What do you like in a locker room? Are you just the old lineman that everybody, I don't know about those guys, they're kind of a different bunch, or are you vocal? Kind of help me get to know you. I'm, I'm vocal, um, especially for the old line. Like, I try and keep keep the energy high, and, you know, I feel like it's it's sometimes get, gets emotional out there, and, you know, I just try to pick up my guys and, you know, keep them up. What are your thoughts, Lawrence, about playing uh, playing in this conference? You've been here a while. What are your thoughts about it? Um, I really like playing in the OBC. Like, um, I like how I like how no matter who you play, you have to come ready to play. You know, like you could be playing the worst team in the conference, but if you don't come ready to play Saturday, it's a chance that you can lose that game. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of talent. It's always talent. Each and every school that we go against is talent everywhere. So like, you really have to dial in and not have like prima donna. Kind of give me the state, coach, of uh, high school football in Missouri in your recruiting area, because when you go to Cape, a wonderful community, wonderful city, right on the banks of the Mississippi. There's a lot to offer there. I know. Tell me what your recruiting kind of base is, kind of what you, what you think about on the recruiting trail, how you attack it, so to speak. Yeah, we're unique that we're, we're not in the middle of the state. We're closer to, to uh, 
Memphis and Kansas City, you know, so it's yep. just different, right, because of our location. But one thing that I promised myself I would do is I would start local. Like if I had a son in, in that community and he was able to uh, be good enough to be considered, I wanted SEMO to consider him. And we have a starting safety from Cape Girardeau. We have a starting linebacker from Jackson. And we have several players from the area. And so that's where we start. Uh, from there, uh, you know, it's St. Louis to Memphis, that I-55 corridor mm -hmm. will be in every school. Uh, from there, you know, I'm a Southern guy. Uh, Football is uh, important in the South, and, and so uh, they have spring ball, and we like to evaluate and things like that, so we go there. I would say what maybe makes me different than other schools is I enjoy the junior college product. I'm one of them. I have my AA degree, and um, I just like their mentality. You know, if I recruit a uh, transfer from Alabama, he's wondering where his fourth pair of shoes is. When I recruit somebody from – Iowa Junior College, they're thankful for a sandwich. And that's just my mentality. Like, I can't stand entitled people. And, um, you know, these junior college kids kind of have that edge that, that fits well with my personality. Want to know about your major? And, uh, and I, go ahead and give you the, the, the toughest class uh, and something you had fun in. All right, uh, I'm an ag, ma uh, ag business major, ag industry, and I've got a minor in plant and soil science. And my hardest class is pre-calc freshman year. Um, and then I guess a fun class would be uh, crop production. We were able to go out in the field and just examine crops and, and tell farmers what they need. Real quickly, Lawrence, major best class. Um, so my major is Corporate communication. All right. Um, I think the best class, the hardest class that I took definitely would be like my freshman year math class. That, that That's really like hard for a lot of kids. And I think the best class, I would say, is just like life sports or something, just like an easy class like that. He's spot on because for us communication guys, math is really hard. So in a fantastic journalism school at Southeast Missouri State. Thanks to all the uh, coaches and players that have joined us from SEMO. We'll continue with the Ohio Valley Conference Football Media Day in just a moment, presented by Delta Dental. More school.